Okay, I see Gok, Ben, and you. Good, I can see all of you. Okay. Um, okay. All right, sweeties, we're going to do the uh, two full. So let's go to two full. And we're going to do, I think it's unit one. Let me just go down. Um, two full, step two, book three. And this will be unit one, listening. Okay, so we're going to do some listening today, okay? Yes. Okay, let me just find it for you quickly. It is here. I'm going to play it for you. I'm not going to read it. It's just better if I play it. Um, here, unit one. Uh, here. Yeah, that one. between a teacher and a student. Sounds exciting. It's your summer vacation. It was great. My family took a trip to France. Sounds exciting. What did you do there? We went to the Louvre Museum and Lisa. The painting was a bit smaller than I imagined, but it was a good experience. What did the boy do during his summer vacation? A. He learned how to paint. B. He traveled with his family. C. He bought the Mona Lisa. Okay, Ewan, what did the boy do during his summer vacation? Did he learn how to paint? Did he travel with his family or did he buy the Mona Lisa? You need to listen carefully, okay? You never know when I'm going to ask you. What did the boy do during the Mona? My fiction between it. Try to get there on time. One of the students. Listen and answer the questions. Number one. Listen to the conversation between a teacher and a student. Hi, James. Welcome back to school. How was your summer vacation? It was great. My family took a trip to France. Sounds exciting. What did you do there? We went to the Louvre Museum and I saw the Mona Lisa. The painting was a bit smaller than I imagined, but it was a good experience. What did the boy do during? Okay, you and what did the boy do? Uh. Okay, and Ben, can you help him? What did the boy do? Hey. He learned how to paint. Okay, let's listen. What did he so say that he did? My family in between a teacher and a student. Okay, let's listen. Hi, James. Welcome back to school. How was your summer vacation? It was great. My family trip to France. Okay, what did he say? My family took over. Okay, let's listen. Sounds exciting. What did you do there? We went to the Louvre Museum and I saw the Mona Lisa. The painting was a bit smaller than I imagined, but it was a good experience. Okay. What did the boy so, do during it? 
He traveled with his family. He took a trip. He went to the museum and he saw the Mona Lisa. Ngak, what did the boy do during the summer vacation? Did he learn how to paint? No, he said nothing about a painting uh, to paint. Did he buy the Mona Lisa? No, he saw the Mona Lisa. Ngok, what's your answer here? He traveled with his family. He traveled with his family. He took a trip with his family. And Ben and Ewan, you must listen very carefully. He took a trip with his family. He didn't say anything about paint or buying something, okay? Let's continue Summer listening. Vacation. Team, friends. Hi, Sarah. What are you doing? I'm reading some travel magazine. Are you planning to go somewhere? Yeah. I am planning to go to a summer camp in New York for eight weeks this year. Sounds cool. I envy you. What is the girl planning to do this year? Okay, Ben, what is the girl planning to do this year? I just A. Hey. Go to a winter camp. Is going to a winter camp? Or a summer camp? T. He bought the Mona Lisa, friends. Hi, Sarah. What are you doing? I'm reading some travel magazine. Are you planning to go somewhere? Yeah. I am planning to go to a summer camp in New York for eight weeks. Sounds cool. Okay, she's reading magazines and she's planning to go to the summer B. camp in New York. B. B, to visit New York. Summer camp, not winter camp. NBU, an article in number one. Listen to the phone message. Hi, Cindy, it's Sean. I just came back from London. I had so much fun there. I went to see Buckingham Palace. I couldn't go in, but I saw a parade of guards marching, accompanied by music played by a military band. It was awesome. I am going to post some photos on my blog later. Come and check them out. Why did Sean call Cindy? A. To ask her to come to London. B. To ask her to send some photos. C. To tell her about his trip. Ngoc, what do you think? I think it is C. Yes, good job. Listen to the phone message. Hi, Robert. It's Jennifer. I just saw a preview about mummies on the Discovery Channel, and it looked very interesting. I know you like learning about mummies. And I thought you might be interested in watching it. I think it is going to air tonight at 9 p.m. on Channel 14. Why did Jennifer call Robert? You would? Why did Jennifer call Robert? To tell him that her mom will be on TV? To tell him about a program? Or to tell him what mommies are? It, uh, it's me. Yes, to tell him about a program because he loves the type of, the type of program. Good. Let me just see if I can just anything here. Okay, we're going to do the next one now. To tell him that her... Part four. Listen and answer the questions. Listen to the story about Jeff. Jeff's family was having dinner at a restaurant on Friday evening. I have some news to tell you, Jeff's father said nervously. I have been told I will be transferred to the branch in Vietnam. They need extra people there. I have to stay there at least two years. I could go there alone. But my company will provide housing for my family and pay for schooling for Jeff and Judy as well if I take all of you with me. 
The news was very sudden, and nobody spoke for a few seconds. They didn't know what to say. Well, I think it could be a good experience spending some time abroad. Meeting new people and learning a new culture and language can be very rewarding, Jeff's mom said, looking at her children. All of a sudden, Jeff became sad because he would have to leave his friends for a long time. He felt nervous about trying new things in a new country. However, he didn't want to be away from his dad for so many years, and he also wanted to try living abroad. I think it would be a great idea for us to live in Vietnam. When are we leaving? Probably in three months, Jeff's father said with relief. He was glad that his family decided to go with him. Okay. And Ben, why are they leaving for Vietnam? Hey. For his father's work, yes. Ngoc, how did Jake... How did Jeff's family feel about living uh, abroad in the end? It's a. They did feel excited. Yes. Jeff's family is going to be. Number one, why is Jeff's family him? A. Listen and answer the question. Listen to the teacher giving a lesson about a festival. Mardi Gras is a big festival held each winter in New Orleans, Louisiana. It was created by French settlers in the 1700s. Mardi Gras means Fat Tuesday in French. People in the past. Okay. You ready? What is a Mardi Gras? Mardi Gras. What is that? Is it a historical monument? Is it a ward ceremony or is it an annual festival? It's a C. An annual festival. What does annual mean? Who knows what the word annual means? Annual. Annual means once a year. It's a festival. Celebrated this festival before they went on a 40 day fast. Now people from different cultural backgrounds come to celebrate this event. People dress in colorful costumes and wear masks. They also ride on floats and throw beads to the public. The floats are giant wagons decorated in different themes. People love watching the parade, listening to music and dancing. Now. Okay. And Ben, how do the people celebrate Mardi Gras? I choose, I choose number A. They dance to the music. We are going to be creative and make our own float out of cardboard boxes. Okay, what are the kids going to make now, Nga? What are the students going to make? To make a float. They're going to make a float. Good job. They're going to make a float. Okay, let's go to unit three and see if you can do unit three. Oh wait, this was unit one. I think this is unit two now. Traffic controller is not Good afternoon. Are about to take off soon. Please fasten your seatbelt. Where is the man? Number one. Listen to the conversation between a flight attendant and a passenger. Would you like something to drink? Yes. May I have some soda, please? Would you like some ice, too? No, just the soda is fine. What did the passenger ask for? A. Soda with ice. 
B. Soda with no ice. C. Water with no ice. You and what did the passenger ask for? It's B. Soda with no ice. Number two. Listen to the conversation between an officer and a traveler. Good afternoon. What is the purpose of your visit? I am here to travel. For how long are you going to stay? About two weeks. Where are you going to stay? At the Genesis Hotel. What did the officer not ask the traveler about? And Ben? The time of departure. B. Hey. Where he will stay. C. The purpose of his visit. Good. Very good. Part three. Listen and answer the question. Number one. Listen to the phone message. Hi, Mom. It's Rick. I just arrived at the airport, and I just need to get my bags from the baggage claim area. Then I am going to take the shuttle bus home. It will probably take at least an hour. I can't wait to be home. See you soon. Why did Rick call his mom? A. To tell her that he is coming home soon. B. To tell her that he is leaving in a few hours. C. To ask her to pick him up from the airport. Okay, Ngak, why did Rick call his mom? To tell her that he is coming home soon. Good. Number two. Listen to the phone message. Hi, Joseph. It's Miranda. I'm still at the airport. My flight has been delayed due to heavy snow. I'm not sure if I can leave tonight. My cell phone battery is dying too. I am going to find a place to charge my phone. If not, I will try to call you from a public phone before I get on board. Why did Miranda call Joseph? You are, why did Miranda call Joseph? It I see. Oh. Oh, hey, do tech. Listen to the phone message. Hi, Joseph. It's Miranda. I'm still at the airport. My phone is due to heavy snow. I'm not sure if I can leave tonight. My cell phone battery is dying, too. I am going to find a place to charge my phone. If not, I will try to call you from a public phone before I get on board. Why did Miranda call Joseph? A. To ask him where she could charge her cell phone. B. To tell him about the flight delay. C. To ask him to use the public phone. She said. She said, uh, my flight has been delayed. My phone is almost. It's B. Her phone is almost dead and she will phone him from a public phone or try and phone him from a public phone. That means her flight has been delayed. Her flight has been delayed. Part four. Listen and answer the questions. Listen to the story about Sally. Sally's family was flying to Hawaii to visit her uncle today. Sally was very excited because it was her first time traveling on an airplane. Mom, I'm very excited, Sally said to her mom at the airport. The airport was huge and crowded. 
She could see many people from different countries. Can I look around, Mom? Sally asked her mom after passing the security checkpoint. Okay. Okay, and Ben, why was Sally excited? Hey, it was the first time flying on a plane. Rudolph, what does Sally think about the airport? But don't go too far. We will be boarding in 30 minutes, so make sure to come to gate 12. Yes? Sally walked around and saw a group of airplanes in line outside. Wow, they are huge. I wonder how those big planes can fly in the sky. Sally said to herself, a few minutes later, sure to come to the Astrum Airport. The airport was huge and crowded. The airport was huge and crowded. Huge and crowded. Ngok? Hey. It's A. It's very, very big. Huge. Ngok, what does huge mean? It means big. Huge means big. Okay. Okay, let's have a look here. She could, okay, but don't go too far. Wow, they are heat in the plane flu. Sally's dick should be here to pick us up. I don't know. Well, my first flight is. Number one visiting her number two all to answer the question listen to their teacher giving a lesson about air traffic controllers there are many people working to help us travel safely on airplanes air traffic controllers play an important role since there aren't any traffic lights or signals in the sky we need air traffic controllers to coordinate the movement of air traffic to Okay, Yuan, what job is a teacher describing? It I see. A traffic controller. Airplanes keep a safe distance from each other. Air traffic controllers monitor air traffic closely to effectively organize the flow in order to avoid any delays and keep passengers safe. Air traffic controllers must have a good memory and the ability... Ngok, what skill must air traffic controllers have? It's a, a good memory. And Ben, what do air traffic controllers do? I, I, choose, I choose number B. B. Hmm to comprehend information quickly. They also need to be quick at making decisions if air traffic can fight. We need air traffic controllers to coordinate the movement of air traffic to help airplanes keep a safe distance. The movement of air traffic to help planes to keep a good distance in the air. So they monitor, they monitor the movement in the air because there is no traffic lights. So if the planes do that, they're gonna crash. So they must make sure they're on different levels when they pass each other. So they do not give snacks in the airplane. Traffic controllers are C. not in airplanes. See, they check the movement. 
They are in high towers or in buildings at the airport usually. And then they check and, have, and they use signals. They're never in the airplane. Okay, let's try unit three. It gets more difficult the more the lower we go with the units. <clears throat> we use different words now. They are friendly with dogs. Fuel. Questions. Number one. Listen to the conversation between a student and a teacher. Do you have any questions about Arctic foxes? How can they survive in a cold area? They can survive in a cold and harsh habitat because they have hair on their paws and their tail can curl around their face to protect them from strong winds. They also have good hearing and that helps them catch their prey that may be hiding under the snow. What is not mentioned about Arctic foxes? A. They have hair on their paws. B. Their tail can cover their face. C. They have a special sense of smell. And Ben, what is not mentioned about Arctic foxes? C. Which one? C. Can you read it? They have a special sense of smell. Mm, look what I've typed. What did I type there? Look, read the red ones. And burn. And burn. They've got hair on their paws. They can cover oh. their face. They have good hearing. What did they not mention? They did not mention the smell. Number two. Listen to the conversation between two students. Hi, Catherine. Where are you going? Hi, Sam. I'm going to the library to do some research for our science class. Wow, you are quick. It's not due until next Friday. I know, but I want to start looking for good information now so that I have a variety of sources to share. What animal are you going to research? Find out about rabbits. They are my favorite. Why is Sam surprised at Catherine? A. She is already starting her assignment. B. Rabbits are her favorite animal. C. She likes science. Okay. Yuan, what is why is Sam surprised? It's a B. It's not B. Ngoc, what do you think? I think it's A. He's not surprised that rabbits are his, her favorite animal. He's surprised because she's starting the test, the assignment, and it's only due in two weeks or next Friday. So why is she starting it now? That's what he wants to know. Why is she doing her assignment now? Part three. Listen and answer the question. Number one. Listen to the phone message. Hi, Harry. It's Lydia. Since you didn't come to school today, I wanted to tell you about today's homework. We made animal masks in art class. It was fun, but nobody finished. So the teacher told us that we should finish our masks before our next class. Don't forget.
forget because we are going to have a photo shoot wearing our masks that day. Why did Lydia call Harry? A. To ask him about the homework. B. To tell him about her favorite animal. C. To tell him to make an animal mask. Okay. Okay. Why did Lydia call Lydia call Harry? She to tell him to make an animal mask. Right. Number two. Listen to the phone message. Hi, Dad. It's Roy. I went to the zoo on a school field trip. I saw dolphins, hippos, polar bears, and even pandas. I took many photos of my favorite animals, and I promised to send them online to my friend. But I don't know how to attach the files through my email. When are you coming home? I need your help. Why did Roy call his dad? You and why did Roy call his dad? A. To ask for help. B. To show him some pictures. C. I. To ask him to take him to the zoo. Good. Part four. Listen and answer the questions. Listen to the story about Amy. Amy went to the zoo with her kindergarten. Amy was very excited because she is an animal lover. Can you make an extra sandwich for me, Mom? Amy asked. I can, but can you really eat two sandwiches? Amy's mom asked her back. The extra one's not for me. Okay, and Ben, what did Amy ask her mom for? B, an extra sandwich. Good. I'm going to give it to my friend, Amy replied. The zoo was crowded with people. There were many kids who were excited to see real animals. We are going to see giraffes now. Please follow me and do not lose your partners, the teacher said. Amy got doubly excited because giraffes were her favorite animal. When all the children were standing near the fence, Amy rummaged through her backpack and took out one of her sandwiches. Hi, giraffe. I'm Amy. Would you like to eat my sandwich? My mom made it for me. It's very yummy, said Amy, raising her sandwich in her hand over the fence. Hi, sweetie. I'm sorry, but you shouldn't feed animals in the zoo. One of the zookeepers came and told Amy. Why not? Amy asked with an upset look on her face. There are some foods that make animals get sick. Then they have to be treated in a special room, and you won't be able to see them until they get better, the zookeeper said. Oh, I see. I'm sorry, giraffe. You can't have my sandwich, but you have my love. I really like you a lot. Okay. You why did the zookeeper stop Amy from feeding the giraffe? She. Um, no, not C. And Ben? A. It could have gotten sick. They can get sick, so they mustn't feed them. They can get very sick. Amy waved her hand at the what the extra time? Number two. Why did the zookeeper stop Amy from feeding the giraffe? A. Listen and answer the question. Listen to the teacher giving a lesson about black-footed ferrets. We are going to talk about black-footed ferrets. You might not be familiar with them because they are rare animals even in the wild. They live in the Midwest and West, and they usually stay hidden below the ground. How do they actually live underground? They usually move through tunnels of burrows, 
but they don't dig their own burrows. They use the ones that are made by bears instead. They usually spend most of their time sleeping during the day and become active at night. Okay, Ngoc, what is mentioned about the black footed ferrets? Is they cannot be seen often. Yes, they can't be seen often. What do they eat? When you look at them, they seem cute, but their prey is prairie dogs, which are much bigger than they are. They sneak up on the prairie dogs when they are asleep. So this animal hunts other animals. That's the prey. They hunt the other, other animals, they grab their throats, and then they bite them, and they kill them, and they eat them. So, Anne Byrne, what does the word prey mean? Prey. B. A. A. Yes, the animal that gets eaten by the other animal, that's prey, or the animal that kills... Are the animals and the animal animals that hunt other animals prey? And bite their throats with their sharp teeth. You and where do they hard, live? But it is just the way they have to survive. It's a bee. Yes, on flat grassy land. That's where we would What is mentioned about black-footed ferrets? A. They are friendly with dogs. B. They cannot be seen often. C. They sleep at night. Number four. What does prey mean? A. An animal that gets eaten by others. B. An animal that kills other animals. C. An animal that... Okay, number four. Can we finish? 